All right, here's a, one more video for today, anyway. Um, and this one is going to be just a brief introduction to layering materials rather than trying to make everything in the same material. Um, and what I mean by that is a few different things. Um, first of all, just on a conceptual level, this is kind of like if I look at my orange here, which is in a work in progress, of course, and I put this big giant sticker on here, and the sticker is definitely not the same material as the rest of the orange, but it's also not necessarily enough of an object, um, especially since it's so would be so thin in real life and so um, basically, you know, a very weird model to try and just make a separate model for the sticker to put on top of this. You still could do that, but it would be very um, tricky um, and kind of weird. Um, so one thing that you could try would be just including the sticker on the orange shader, but then the question is, okay, I don't want subsurface scattering on the sticker, I don't want spec the same specular properties or the same color as the orange skin on my, sh on my sticker, so how do I do that? Um, so first of all, uh, in Mudbox here, I created this group, and you can do that just by going up here and creating a group, and I'm going to put all three of my like orange skin color um, layers, this is going very slow for some reason, into this group. Nope, that didn't make it in there, did it? And that way I can just do this to toggle those on and off, and my sticker is separate. And the sticker, um, everything except right here is transparent. Now, the reason I did this, and that why you might want to do it, is because now I can right-click on this and say, Export Group Merged. And this is slightly annoying. If anyone knows how to set a project in Mudbox, please let me know. But uh, as far as I can tell, that's not a thing that Mudbox does the same way that it does in Maya. Um, so I might just save out my um, skin color, and I can say, like, orange, aragony orange skin color. I'm going to make this a Targa. And the sticker, I can just right-click and say Export Selected. And I'll probably just make this a Targa too. And I'll say orange sticker color instead of... Uh, there we go. And so now those, those images went to my Source Images folder. Um, so let's jump back into Maya. Now, um, I could try, and this would definitely be, you know, a legitimate way of doing this, but I could try um, putting, you know, the, the sticker in here and kind of like trying to balance between this subsurface stuff. Um, and I'd probably, what I'd basically have to do would be put in um, a file here, um, and have it be weighted everywhere. Actually, let me just try to do this. Um, let me backtrack for a second. Let me try to do this just with a checkerboard um, because sometimes it's actually easier to, to make sure that what you're doing uh, is working correctly with a checkerboard rather than um, you know going ahead and putting your texture directly in there. So I'll make this base color like blue. And oops, no, I didn't. You can, luckily, Arnold, we can see a preview of this here. So um, if I render this, you can see that what's happening is everywhere um, where that checkerboard is white in the subsurface weight, everywhere that that is white, um, the weight is 1. And everywhere where that checkerboard is black, the weight is zero, which means that we go back to seeing the diffuse in underneath. And if I bring up my metalness, actually the metalness overrides the uh, <laughs> the subsurface, so that won't actually work um, the same way. Uh, but anyway, so certain attributes will work together, certain attributes won't. But the point is that... Um, Theoretically, I could put in for the weight here instead of a checkerboard. Um, I could put in a file 
and then I could put in the uh, sticker and I would just use like the alpha information um, from that sticker and here luckily that's why I used a targa by the way um, technically a PNG would probably do this too but a targa is a little bit better at it um, so oh my god I'm murdering my computer while I'm doing this Oh my goodness. Well, I crashed Maya, folks. Give me a sec. Alright, so uh, I just reopened the scene um, and put back in the uh, sticker in here for um, the, the uh, sorry, blah, 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 the weight of the subsurface. And you can do this for anything, it doesn't have to be the subsurface, it could be anything that has a weight. But if I invert this, then, you know, whatever is here. Um, would be diffuse, and then the rest of this is subsurface. So if I put in the sticker for that, and I guess while I'm at it, I'll also put in a, a file for my subsurface and see how that turns out, just uh, to make sure that everything's working here. And I should probably save before this crashes again. Anyway, so um, you can see here that what's happening is I do get the sticker. Now, the weird thing is I do get the um, the displacement map showing through as well, and that's because the displacement map isn't taking into account the sticker. Um, so I'd kind of have to mask that in a slightly different way. Um, but you, the, you can see why this would be tricky to do for the whole orange, uh, because what's happening is I'd have to also use um, kind of the same technique of putting in a, a map for the weight of the specular so that the orange has or the sticker and the orange skin have a different specular uh, properties um, and so this is totally a valid way of doing it but if um, you know you just keep in mind that if you are trying to build your whole shader um, as one thing you have to put in the mental energy and of course just time um, to make sure that all of your maps are kind of like uh, inter interwoven and working together uh, correctly for the whole thing. Now the other way of approaching the same technique, oh and by the way you can see here that by putting in that image for the, the subsurface color it is showing up correctly. Not that I would necessarily want to use this map, um, that was kind of just a, a playtest map, so to speak. Um, anyway, what I, what I was going to say is um, another way of doing the similar concept, although slightly early... Uh, oh, sorry, I started reading that error message while I was talking. Uh, slightly differently would be to create a layered shader. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Maya... And I might just type in like layer or lay, uh, and I can see there's a whole bunch of things with the word layer, but and there's an uh, Arnold layer shader here. You can use this, but you have to update your Arnold version to the absolutely newest version because it just got released. Um, but if I create a layered shader, what I can do is oops, I could bring my orange skin shader. And I can say graph network here. Uh, oh, I always forget how to do this. It's one of these buttons that I can just say add selected node. There we go. Add that to the graph. Um, and what I could do here is I could take my 
orange skin shader and I could connect the out color to my inputs over here and then I can click in here and make another layer now technically I'd want to bring this I'm middle mouse clicking and dragging there to, to rearrange those um, and let me just temporarily remove that and remove the subsurface weight control and um, basically if I put in uh, okay so this is you know one um, just kind of layer on top of this whole shader here so I'm going to use my checkerboard trick to show you what's happening again here oh and of course I have to remember to actually apply <laughs> the layered shader so I'm going to select my object and say assign material to selection and one thing that I've discovered is that you have to change it works better if you change the compositing flag here to layer texture rather than layer shader and let's take a look okay and now you can see the same thing so this this weird green color basically just indicates that there is no shader um, and then the checkerboard masks off that shader and shows the orange shader underneath so hopefully you can see where I'm going with this already thank you Maya that is enough for now um, so instead of just having this green thing here what I could do is make a completely new um, Arnold shader and I could name this you know like orange sticker shader because this one is orange skin shader and in this one I could just put in um, my sticker image for the color I can play with the the specular attributes and whatnot all um, independently oh right I forgot to connect this in sorry I'm a little it's a little late I was uh, not planning on making so so many videos <laughs> um, but that's okay let's put the out color into this oh so I could just uh, technically I can just um, middle mouse drag this right into there and have it connect in for me um, and now I can see that the sticker is there except the shader is incomplete because this color is um, you know the color is only on the sticker and everywhere else is just nothing which is going to render as black so what I need to do is also put in um, this sticker file into the transparency right here so I'm gonna break the connection and get rid of that checkerboard and then to make this easier I'm just gonna middle mouse drag um, that oh, is this not working I guess I'll just do out alpha and put that into hmm. Let me just do this manually. I guess I'm trying to save uh, <laughs> save resources here. I might have been putting in the wrong one, but technically I would want to reuse that sh same shader. But uh, for now, aha! Uh -huh, now we can see the viewport is showing us it's kind of working. I think it's backwards. Or I remember earlier I had to invert it. I did that kind of subtly, so maybe you didn't pick up on that, but. Uh, I almost forgot I did it too. So here, I'm going to click um, wherever invert is. It might not appear over here. It might, I might need to see the full options. But yeah, right over here. Invert. Let's try that again. There we go. So there, this is acting a little weird still, and I know the reason why, and that is because this image is um, colored so you know there's blue there's white there's red and all that stuff in the sticker photo 
um, and a transparency mask, just like a specular map or a bump map or whatever, should really just be black and white. So what I probably want to do is bring this Targa file into Photoshop, make it so that the sticker part is just pure white and the rest of it is just blank, and then that would be what I'd use. So I'd technically have to save out a different image called, you know, layered shader, transparency mask, or something like that. And I'd have to plug that in for um, the transparency instead. I'm sure there's some other way I could um, do that just by adjusting the colors or whatnot um, in Maya here. But for now, um, this is already 15 minutes long, and I did not have everything planned out in advance. So I'm just going to leave it at that. We can talk about this more during class if you're in my class. If you're a random person watching this on YouTube, then um, feel free to message me or whatever. But this is just kind of a, a thing to pique your interest and bring up um, how you could go about using this layered shader. All right. Well, um, you're probably already bored, so I'm going to end this video now. Hopefully it's helpful, and I'll see you next time.